στην Ομπορία. Είμαι με το ταξί και 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 με το ταξί She say you I cry because you are here today. So welcome to the first review show of the season. It's not really a start of the season, is it? It's a, more like a fucking playground kickabout. But I'm still, I've got Roy here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, tell your nunna because people still aren't liking the pod. I don't see loads of likes. I see loads of views, but I don't see lots of likes. I'm quite disappointed with you lot, in all fairness. You like other podcasts. You don't like this one. Maybe we should start doing other stuff, Roy. Maybe we should start talking about gardening or vegetables and let's see how many likes we get. We might have villagers jumping on and farmers giving us advice on how to grow, I don't know, Goloja. I don't know. How you doing? You're muted. Lovely. Yeah, and I'm, sa- I'm saying, yeah, uh, maybe also <laughs> growing trifilli as well. That's yeah, fine. True. True. Uh, yeah, I'm maybe. fine. I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Not bad, not bad. A little bit um, tired from work. Uh, there's a lot of heat that sucks all the fucking energy that you might have. Um, uh, but other than that, okay, it was nice to go back to the Yibedo. Last time was uh, when we went to the cup final together. Mm. Yeah, okay, you, you don't expect much at this time of the year. You know, it's just a friendly... Uh, we haven't even gone to Poland yet, which is the basic stadium this pretty much year. So uh, let's not forget that uh, yesterday we played against a team that's going to start playing their official games uh, very soon, very, very soon. Uh, um, uh, we, on the, on the other hand, um, had six players out yesterday, actually five players out and one player who didn't play, plus another four at least transfers so that um, makes the tally to 10 players that we're going to have in the very near future and we can depend on them. So, uh, like I said, you can't judge very strictly. It's uh, like you said, yesterday. But still, you know, you want to go to the stadium. You want to, you know, they always say that these games are for the managers and uh, yeah, because they want to experiment but also it's the you know the fans are waiting for these mm. games you know, to talk about football i mean it's been quiet the last uh, couple of weeks i'd say so it was nice like i said it's nice to go back uh um we saw two basically in the goddess and um in all honesty, I was I was more happy with what we saw in the first half when uh, there were more kids rather than the second half where I expected a bit more quality. But you know, I'm I'm not too fast. I'm not too bothered. It was nice to you. I had my eyes on Barker and Gaiafas, who were two players that you know uh, were Barker wasn't with us last year. Gaiafas, I didn't really have the chance to to see. His, you know, he's. Uh, name uh just his surname you know it makes you curious uh to see if he's got the genes of his papu and his dad but yeah i mean um, it was an enjoyable 90 minutes to even on then uh i had the the chance to meet up with some of the players as well so that made my day i felt like a little kid you know <laughs> uh it was really i was really happy to see them but yeah so overall it was a a nice night. Okay, obviously, I, I don't like losing, even in friendly games. <laughs> but uh, at the end of the day, so I'll, I'll let this this one slide. <laughs> you know, how did you see it from home? Oh, you, you don't like losing that fucking conga or 
you know, snap. So I'm not surprised. Yeah, I, I don't like. I don't like now. losing them. I don't like. Losing. <laughs> well, I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, I don't need to ask a question. Uh, how's the heat wave? I'm not gonna lie to you, Red. It ain't a big deal for me. It really ain't. It really ain't. I'll just sit outside for an hour or so. I come back inside. I go back outside. You've got rotation, man. You got to learn. Fucking, I've, I've been Dubai enough times, and that's fucking hot. So, um, I've had my practice. So, hello, Yanna, and uh, Marilena. How are you? Barker looking good. Guy, I felt also impressed, but Zefki is a serious talent. Now, looking at the lineup there, um, when we started. Uh, I weren't really surprised, as you mentioned before, it's a kick about. You're not going to get a first strong 11, especially given some players arrived back at preseason late. Not um, it was their fault. That's That was the schedule. I think Bash came back from holiday a couple of days later than, than uh, most of the squad. There's a few other players who I think perhaps carried a few injuries or perhaps they played too many games last season and uh, they were given a bit of an extended break. Uh, but we had Banayi in goal, Lesiak at left back, Psati right back, Gaiafa and Lang in the middle, mix in the centre with Asimeno. We had Barker, we had Crystal, who effectively was a number 10. Um, Sava was on the right-hand side and Gagul up top. And I've got highlights of the game anyway. I don't know if you want me to just put them up and we could just talk about certain things. So I, I think that's probably the best way to go in all fairness, right? Um, you know, not much really happened, but I saw glimpses of what to expect this season, especially from Barker, who, you know, as you saw, well, you were there, I think you were, you were on that podcast. I was talking about my main concerns were his fitness and his injuries. And he appears to be a player who wants to make an instant impact. He was very direct on the ball, as, as I said, he'd be, uh, likes to run at fullbacks and, um, I think the first clip that we're going to show, in fact, is it's just pretty much most of the highlights of the game. Um, what we had, here we go. He's, he's running at the fullback. And what I love is his quick feet. You know, bringing from the, the ball from right foot to left foot. Okay, he probably could have done better with the cross. But again, first game of the season. This is a lovely ball from Asimeno, man. Um, and Gagel perhaps should have got that on target. But it goes back to what I said about him last season. He's getting in the right positions. He's playing off the defender's shoulder now. And, and this bit is cool from Barker. Is absolutely fantastic. You know, the composure on the lad is brilliant and he's looking for the pass. Um, I think this is the opportunity down our right-hand side, if I'm not mistaken. Again, we intercept the ball. And if you notice on, on the transition there, Roy, there are people and bodies getting forward. This is a great run uh, from Sava. And if you watch Guggles' positioning, if I'm going to rewind this one back, because again, it goes back to what I said about Guggles' positioning, right? Um, where is it? Is this the one? Yeah, this is the one, all right. When um when Sava gets the ball, just keep an eye on Gagul because he's looking to run in behind the two centre backs and he pulls one out of position and it gives that space for for Sava to make a run. So it's absolutely brilliant, man. And yeah, again, nice it goes back to what I said about the lad. He's um he's he's got so much intelligence. He's got so much ball intelligence, man. It's fantastic. Um, this is another one. This is one where he's put it across. Yes, yeah, Barker again. And this is second half. Okay. We had, the, we had the changes. Actually, I'll tell you what, let me pause it here. We could talk about the, the substitutions, really. Um, a lot of changes at halftime. I think the only person that stayed on the pitch was Asimeno, wasn't it? Yeah. So, Venezuela come on, he came left back. Matthews was at right back. Humboldt came on. Bruno came on to play as a number 10. Uh, Lois on the right-hand side. Uh, who was Zefki was on the left, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah Lois Zefki. Um, Iriagidis, goalkeeper, team up yeah. front. Miletic came on. Uh, so it was basically Griagidis, Miletic, Juste, Matthews, Venizelo, left back, and then it was Asim, uh, Idan uh, Osambos, or Asimenos, or Bruno, or Tim, or Angelos Ozevki, Cheolo is with Alexia. Okay, if, if, if I just want to say something about the first half, uh, as I've mentioned, you know, if you want, we can talk uh, individually about some of the players. I don't think uh, Panayi was really tested other than, uh, was it a header or a shot that he yeah. he held comfortably? But he he seemed like his posture, his body language seemed to show that he was he was ready. He felt confident. He enjoyed being playing football because let's not forget the last few years he hasn't been getting the opportunities that he might have wanted I mean 
when you've got keepers like Fabi and uh, uh, Francis as well, uh, it's really difficult to get the time, uh, considering that he had these injuries. Uh, let's not forget that Giriagidis is there lurking, waiting for his opportunities as well. But, you know, without him being tested, he's body language showed that he felt confident uh, and uh, ready to maybe grab any opportunity that uh, might come his way this season. As I said, Kayafas, I was curious to see. Uh, I think the kid, uh, you know, obviously this is just the first impression of a, of the first friendly game. That's, you know, don't, don't take us too seriously, you know. Um, but I, I think he, he was uh, trying to be at the right place at the right time. I, I, um one thing I can say is that uh, I don't know if um, he seemed a bit slow at times. Uh, so I don't know if it's because probably, you know, for, from the maybe his feet are heavy still or, or if it's him being not very fast as a player or a bit of both. Uh, at times, uh, especially when he had the ball on his feet and he had to, to pass the ball, I wasn't very sure he had that confidence but that's natural but overall i think um he's an interesting prospect but i don't know how he can surpass players like sort of uh Juste Miletic, lang uh, panayodu there's also evangelu uh, there so in the rank i don't i don't know how easy it will be for him to get some extra minutes but it was nice to to see him play um Lang, I have to say that uh, it was one of the few times that I, I saw him being very comfortable as a leader in the defense. He, it seems that his uh, performances the last few months of the season, plus uh, his great performances with his national team, helped him grow his confidence a lot. And it's something that he said uh, at the end of the game the, when he got interviewed. He said, "You know, uh, I feel like I." I I've got more responsibilities this season and uh, I have to be, uh, I was, I'm happy to obviously play football again and, and I have to help the youngsters and, and be more of a leader, but be also very, try and be more consistent and not have ups and downs uh, during the season. So basically he covered right about everything, but uh, yeah, he was, he, was, he was really good. He seemed like he was the experienced one out of the lot and um he was very comfortable. Paris, uh, on the right, he, he I, I don't, I don't have any complaints. Um, okay, uh, on his right hand side, I think there was this um, African player uh, that was quite fast and you know skillful. He might have given him some difficulties at time, but overall, uh, I don't think he. Any, I don't think the defensive line or, or generally the defensive mechanism of the team wasn't really put to the test. There's a back line that never never played together. Yeah, but it's they weren't four, really anyway. they weren't either they weren't really tested. They weren't they weren't against the ropes. They weren't you know attacking us left, right, and centre. You know that team's gonna play their first game really soon. So you could see the only thing that I thought that they they were. Uh, better was the basically the shit housing and the physicality, like the, the, they were fouling more. Uh, but other than that, I didn't I didn't really see much from uh, that Hapoel team, and uh, it surprised me pleasantly that you know, as I said before before I finish, uh, you know, uh, the talking about the players is that you know at this time of season, uh, I I'm, I'm, I can say I was quite pleased with what I saw. I saw maybe even more than what I expected, especially from the first uh, half. Uh, there was there was a cohesion. The, the, you could see what we were trying to do. You know, we, maybe we didn't keep possession as much as we were, but we we attacked. There was a, a variety, as you said. We were pushing up men. You know, it wasn't just one man and then lifting his head up and not finding anyone around him. So. Um, yeah, so uh, I don't know if you want to talk about the back line before I move on, because then I'll be just talking for, for ages. To, to be honest, I, I didn't see anything um, that I didn't expect from that back line. Our fullbacks were getting forwards uh, quite a lot, which is something we've been used to for a few years. Let's get it right. We had uh, Harris doing that. We had, uh, obviously, Lesiax has been doing that. I think what 
I was happiest with was, especially first half, how the wingers and the fullbacks were working together. And this is the key factor because, the, especially under Berg, I noticed, okay, while Thiago was doing his bit to help Jan, he was more effective going forward than he was defensively. Same with Loizo and, and Shehu. Whereas since Lennon has come in, the wide men have got their responsibilities. And, you know, again, I'm not going to read into this too much because it was only a preseason game. Results aren't important. It's all about fitness and building a relationship or a chemistry with, with the squad. Um, but seeing Barker and Yan interchanging, that filled me with a, with a lot of confidence going into the season. Um, we finally got two guys that are very, very dangerous on that side that can work together. Obviously, Johnny's was brilliant as well. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I think the difference with Johnny's and, and Barker, for example, is Barker's got that top level experience that Johnny's didn't at the time. And Johnny's is still learning. Um, now, this isn't to say that Barker is going to be better than Johnny's or he's going to be just as good as we don't know. We don't know how many games a season he's going to play. But again, Given his first half performance, how he was running at the fullbacks, that filled me with a lot of confidence. And that's what we need. We need a, full, uh, a winger that can do that. Now, there's a couple of comments here I want to I I bring up, right? From this person. We need more quality. Wake up. This is to us. We need players in attack with assists and, and goals. Nothing else matters. I agree. But this, is, this transfer window is still open from the 40-odd days. Yeah? So... I think we just need to calm the fuck down a little bit. You know, we, we can't get angry because we haven't got that winger that we want or that Degari that we want. And there's another comment. Talk about Gaiafas, et cetera, et cetera. But we're going to finish seventh again. Bring Nadel Ovada. Right, okay. Uh, I'm not going to talk about Vada anymore. And, and Nadel coming to one, it won't happen. So let, let's get that. And a striker. And the 10. Um, we're looking for a striker. And as for a 10, we've got Foddy, and I think Bruno played their second half. Um, and let's get let's let's get this one right again, just to um throw another fucking piece of shit down the toilet. Um if you look at the three behind the front man yesterday, they were interchanging. And this is another thing that we need to realize that we're not gonna have the same predictable system as we did under a, the previous manager. Um there's gonna be a lot of uh, different styles, a lot of different players in various positions. And we need to rely on a squad because it's a squad game. But, um, yeah, I think I've, I've really digressed from your original question, there, Roy, to be honest. But, yeah, yeah. No, I was basically, yeah, yeah, because we're analysing the in individual, you know, um, uh, performance. Shall I put the second half highlights? Shall I put the second half on? Yeah, go ahead, man, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, we created a couple of opportunities, as you can see, Bruno running at defenders. Um, I mean, what was his first time, yeah. yeah, and this one again, th this this is a, an opportunity created having won the ball through a press. Now, obviously, Loiso's done quite a bit there, and he's done a little bit too much. <laughs> um, but again, if he's not getting the support from the fullback, I don't know what this was brilliant from, from Tim. The first touch was fantastic, but the finish again, um. Before we talk about this one, there, right? Talk to me about Tim, um, because I'm still not sold on the guy. I'm really not, and you know, I, I think we need another striker to really give him a kick up the arse. Because obviously, Gabu is still evolving as a player, and we can't expect too much from him. Um, but obviously, there's going to be more pressure because he's been playing more games now. He, you know, we saw that goal against Basel last season, how capable he is of scoring goals, but he's not doing it consistently. And then you've got Tim that's come in with a bit of a reputation, scoring goals in Eredivisie and wherever country he's been. But last season, for me, he, he disappointed a lot. That cup final appearance, as you know, I've still got to be in my bonnet about that. But um, do you see him being better this season? Uh, actually, to be honest, I I expect from the players who, who remain from last season to be better this season. And I expect from the players who, who came in to also be better than the ones they, they came in to replace. Obviously, 
Some of them not just from last season, but from, from what we have seen from them. Like you said, rightly so, uh, Tim is a player who had a very good reputation. He built a, a very good reputation in his career. He scored a lot of goals. Uh, as we mentioned many times in the past and last year, I think that a lot of our strikers were feeding off of scraps. And uh, some people uh, don't seem to understand that the lack of creativity and the fact that they were tracking back and the system we were playing didn't really help them. And um, they weren't really being fed in the comf comfort zone. So uh, uh, to answer your question, I'm going to try and be a bit more diplomatic in the sense that, okay, I, the, the thing with the striker is it's been going on since Matt left, you know. Um, we had uh, Chepa score goals when he came in January and he, they were very decisive for us to win the league. Uh, last year, unfortunately, the tally uh, and, and even the year before of our strikers overall, uh, weren't impressive, even though they, they had the they had their work ethic and they were trying. Uh, to be honest, I was expecting that uh, Tim this year is going to be the pleasant surprise of the team. Uh, him and and Zahariu are two players that I expect that they they're going to step up this season. Uh, saying that, I'm not saying because I see a lot of messages about a striker. We need this. We need that. You know. Uh, sometimes maybe us having uh, the, the time, ne, si fono yoro komo di enem mono striker pu selume selume para bano me hasto kendron bechtes episis. Jesus se kapto stof teron prebi na dume na mun na kamo just taris tera ebi abodi ema tha. What's what's this? Did you know anything about this? Yeah, this is just a, a Cypriot joke. Uh, Angurin du Pingu is just a... Uh, you know, I know. Ah, you know. So, yeah. I thought, I thought, I thought I'd cheer you up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm fine. But, you know, um, because this is the second consecutive year and the third transfer window um, that we are sort of taking our time, you know, a bit more than my liking. I'm not going to start complaining or whatever, but, you know, it seems to me that the, the fact that we do have a bit more time, I don't know what we are waiting for. Uh, the, the, there are teams that are playing tomorrow. Uh, Ajax playing today. Abos playing tomorrow. Aris, Pavos, they're all signing players. And from the CVs, Anorthos is, who's not playing in Europe, signed some really good players from their CV. And I'm wondering to myself, why can't Omonia be a bit more decisive and, and sign some players? Because we're playing, you know, an official game in less than a month and uh, a European game, which is going to be really important. So I don't understand. OK, on the one hand, I'm, I, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm panicking. But on the other hand, you know, it's four. you need four more players and you need to be a bit more decisive and you need to to give deadlines to some of the players and say, OK, if you're not interested with, with these sort of... Um, I agree with Pedro. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that other guy's talking about. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he likes touching dogs. I don't know. Like... <laughs> Give me just a second. I'll open the door. Just a second. Open the door. But yeah, I don't think Tim will step up. I, I'm hoping you're wrong as well, and I'm hoping I'm wrong, but I've I've lost faith in him already, and this sounds really bad. <laughs> it really sounds really bad. But I, I don't know. Look, when you have one person up top, right, you need someone that can hold the ball up that's strong, that's good in the air, and has got a bit of pace about him, and can also finish. He's got skill. He's got ability. But for me, milk turns quicker than him. You know, that that's the thing. And again, in the cup final, when I know he was playing up top on his own, with 10 men, he was ineffective. Um, his best game was against Anorthos when we were down to 10 men, in my opinion. Uh, forget the two goals he scored against Bayek in that game. But I, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. I really don't know. Well, Here's listen. one here, Roy. Here's yeah. one here for, for Chris as well. What do you... Hey, we're... we're... 
talking about the same thing over and over and over again. Okay. Warda hmm. is, is a top quality player, okay? I, I think, in my personal opinion, he's one of the most talented players that play. Allah also in any ικανότητα του μες στο ύπεδο να λέγουν τόσο ελίως μονούς του σε εξωαγωνιστικά θέματα. A lot of people might say that yeah, this year he held an orthosis by the hand for like almost 10 months and he was amazing and you don't care what he does off the pitch but you do you do in a, in a sense. I'm not going to say that if, if, if Omonia signs Wada, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be supportive of him. You know, we're going to be supportive of him But we're also going to be critical of him. If if we find out that he does shit like he used to do in his previous teams, we're going to say as it is, you know. And this is something that we're going to try and do more of this season. You know, it's it's good for everyone to know that, you know, if we see something we don't like, we're going to try and be patient at the beginning and, and diplomatic. But, you know, we're not going to lie about anything, you know, and we're not going to hide behind our finger. So... If we do sign Wada, I think we're putting in a player that's gonna uh, level us up. He's gonna and and Namas Anemasi be belong Wada because I don't think we have a player of his caliber or his quality in the team. But as we we heard from many players the past two three years that we've uh, had them on the show is that one of the secrets to the success. Of our team was uh, the the dressing room and the and uh, I don't know if 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 Warda fits in that you know Stundokalondo to Kaliman Buthelum and Lakradum without saying that you know some someone doesn't change but uh, that's probably the last time I'm going to talk about Warda unless we sign him or someone else signs him but you know I'm, I'm going to be repeating the same things. Um, Listen, let's let's not worry about players who we don't have and who you know we're linked with. We've been linked with hundreds of players, right? Hundreds of players over the past two, three seasons, and um, <clears throat> it's good to get excited about transfers and understand it's frustrating to see other clubs bringing players, especially clubs who are under investigation for not being able to pay players. But at the end of the day, we we have a manager that's come in. And won us the cup as he was expected to, right? I'm pretty sure he knows the players that he wants. I'm pretty sure the people high up uh, are doing what they can. And again, Ipomoni, man, like there's no point in stressing about it yet. You know, the the window hasn't officially closed. There's still another 43 days, something like that. I know. Look, I know what you're gonna say. I know what you're gonna say we want them to come in. We want them to. I, I get it, but worst comes to worst, yeah? We get someone on deadline day. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the deals are going to be done within the next two weeks, within two weeks, not in two weeks, within the two weeks. Something might be announced tomorrow, the day after. We don't know, okay? If we won yesterday against Hapoel, there'd be people saying, oh, we're ready to go. We're ready to start. We're ready to start the season. But I'm getting people messaging me saying, Oh, we need this. We need that. we know we need this and we need that. But again, I'm pretty sure the people that are making the decisions and the manager and the coaching staff know this already. And I'm pretty sure that they're looking at players. So again, man, like we we just need to be bloody patient. Yes, again, I repeat myself. It's frustrating when you see other clubs making their signings. But that what's to say that these these clubs haven't been looking at these players for a long time? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, man. The, Listen. Yeah, sure. go, go on, go on. Right. Look, look how many players have left us this summer, right? Look how many players have left Anorthosi, have left Abol, they have left Abolon, right? These clubs knew that these players were out of contract, right? So I'm pretty sure that they they thought the moment this, the season kicked off or whenever at a certain stage, maybe January time, they're probably thinking, right, let's start preparing for the summer because we're going to have players leaving. We need to start looking. Okay, man. I, honestly, it's, it's it's ridiculous. I just, I just think that it's getting a bit over the top now, and it's getting too it's getting repetitive. And I'm bored. I'm bored of talking about transfer targets now. Honestly, I'm bored. Uh, I think the fact that last year we uh, it's, it's not just this year. Last year we 
we did the same thing last summer. Then we, we repeated it in January as well when we waited till the right to the last minute. And the fact that we it didn't work out for us the way we expected last season, I think this is why it's made uh, a few of the fans be a little bit impatient. And, and the fact that you're seeing other teams signing players, you're thinking to yourself, well, you're Omonia. And, uh, you know, Lennon was, was, was here three, for almost three months last season. So he could have... Uh, you know, already started doing his um, scouting about what he wants. So, okay, I, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not too, too worried about it. But at the same time, every day that passes by and we don't announce a player and I don't see him training with the rest of the team, there's always going to be that uh, reason uh, for people. Yanamur Muris, Yanamur Muris, you see. But, uh, yeah, as I said, I'm I'm willing to to wait a bit a bit longer because I'll give you an example. Fast forward a few weeks, we're playing the European game, and we miss two or three chances, and we don't score a goal, and we get disqualified from the Europa League. We're going to be saying, "Oh, if we had the striker, if we go to the game and we can't create, ah, oh, where's the number ten? You know, you always give excuses to people. I'm not that if the other thing happens, put in an in us, where you, we might assign Wada and Safo and Laifi and Gero and whoever and still get disqualified. And people don't care. People just want the result. They're not going to yeah, care. But, yeah, but don't forget, right? don't forget, for some reason, it's like we need a, we need a name as well. It's like we need a, we need a, a bum. Like, why? You want players to play in the system, not players so you can like, put a poster of them on your fucking wall. Do you know what I mean? This is another thing that annoys me. Like, marquee names. You want marquee... Listen, we cannot compete financially with the likes of Buffer and Addis. Financially, we can't compete with them. Let's just, just get that right. We can't. Because they, they shit money at the moment. Yeah? So we need to sign players that are good enough, not because of a name. Forget Buffer linked with Kadi at Karabag and all these other players that, that are linked with them, right? Yes, we should be linked with big names. I agree. But we don't have the financial power that they do. I don't think people realise how much money Buffer and, and Aris have. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But anyway... We don't need these huge names because we've seen big names coming to the club over the years and they haven't performed for whatever reason. So are we going to sit and say, oh, we want this player, this player, this player? No, we want a player that's proven to score goals. We want a player that's proved that can give assists, a player that can defend. Do you know what I mean? I write play, right players for the right system. You don't know, the, the, the older I get, the more I am um, of that philosophy. But yeah, you, but you, last you, season, last season, up well, signed those three Georgians, and they're talking about Galacticos. And what happened to them? They bottled the title. So names don't really mean anything, do they? No, no. Okay, okay, Refi. It's just the, the the expectations, or you you think you're 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 signing someone that's proven in the league what he can do, you know? It's the same with Wada. Let's, for example, someone signs Wada and this year he's shit. Yeah, but last year he, he was good. You don't you don't know how he's going to adopt with the team, how he's going to gel with yeah. the team, if he's going to be complacent, if he's going to get injured. If whatever, I don't know, man. Yeah. So, yeah. But anyway, but, no, yeah, no, let's, let's bring out the rest of these highlights today because we, you know, we've done we've done half an hour talking about <laughs> practically <Yeah>. nothing. <laughs> yeah, just gibberish. Was this, was this the goal? I think this might have been the goal. Yeah, so this one we've we've uh, tried to play a little give and go, but we've obviously been dispossessed. And to be honest, all right, okay, and it's, it's frustrating to concede a goal like that, but all right, we, we could have done a lot better. But again, this this is a lovely move. Um, yeah. Tim was quite important, and Asimeno again was fantastic. Yeah. Um, perhaps Zeki could have got that shot on target, but again, oh, as you can see, I screen recorded that with my phone. <laughs> and again, Bruno. Um, this is an interesting one, eh? Both of his opportunities, he's, he's made the runs from the centre. I mean, this was the one that pissed me off. The foul on Rosal, man. I mean, Jesus Christ. He's, he's raped him down the back of his, his Achilles. Now, you spoke to him. He, he's all right, yeah? Well, listen, OK. What he said is that, uh, don't worry. I mean, uh, don't, don't worry. Is is not, you know, 
the bad scenario, but obviously you need uh, 24 to 48 hours for the swelling, and then he's going to have his MRI, but they're hoping that, you know, he's going to get away with maybe just a few days, uh, you know, packing ice on his on his ankle and he should be okay. So, but, but when but I was saw it his him, ankle, though, was it his ankle or was it his Achilles? Yeah. Ah, I need to say, no, I need to say, I need to say, I need to say, but anyway, he told me, don't worry, don't worry, I'm I'm okay. I mean, he repeated mm. that twice. And, uh, but obviously, you know, you, don't, you never know with these injuries because it's too soon, but the protests and dixies are not going to be able to get out of it. Well, he wasn't stretched off, which is a, which is a good thing. No, because um, you know, he no. just had packed it with ice and he was like sort of limping and walking slowly. They even gave him a cake for his birthday in the dressing room after the game. So <laughs> he was, uh, yeah, he, he had a smile on his face. It was his birthday yesterday as well. So, he's just, so 19. Yeah, 19. Oh, I, yeah. I remember him when he was 17. <laughs> <laughs> And 15 and 14, <laughs> watching yeah. him on YouTube. <laughs> you were talking about this kid, man. Bless him. Yeah. So and this is him. an answer also for a, for a guy who asked about Luis. I think I I read a okay. Yeah, it was, it was. Uh, man, I'm going to or Chris. Chris, but I was under the program the podcast must be mass and ask Silos. Yeah, he's a good one. Oh, you know, he's a big guitar. Oh, yeah, I thought he was giving out the flyers. Wasn't he giving out the flyers at the, at the, ah, the, the nightclub saying, come in, come into our club. Free drinks, free shots. Free He's shot. like, okay, boy, still. Okay. Yeah, well, I don't know, man. I don't know, I don't know. 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 Is there anything else? Got? Okay. Uh, going back to how we started, uh, I thought, you know, I think Salas is an interesting prospect as well. Uh, and uh, maybe he will uh, get some opportunities this season. Uh, Zefki's played for Gamnodi Salas season and, and it seemed like he's a guy in Ducalon. Venizelos played as a left back. I remember him being more of a defensive midfielder, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Like, yeah. I think he played a couple of times as a centre back as well, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. So, you know, obviously, yesterday. Um, we didn't he have did well left back. I think yeah. he did well left back. We didn't have any other options. So obviously, we were looking for a left back. Uh, from what I'm hearing, I don't actually. I'm not going to say. Uh, I'm not going to say this because I'm not sure. It's not. Uh, it's an inside information that I got. So I'm. I'm not going to. I'm not going to say anything on air. Uh, That's why you have DMs. People gonna yeah. slide in them now. What do you know? The book says where I famous. No, 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 no. It's uh, it has to do with the anyway. A kid that anyway. from the academy. Allo number is Rebef Kiabe de Masjesiska. Felona was also Harry Diria, still on Madan do beach handball. This one is the Ginegia. Yes, no, we can be just in Italian. Todd Rodon Tropeo, Chesindoma, El Pizuno, the Nahume. Σύντομα ελπίζω ότι να έχουμε και μια από τις παίχτριες πάνω στο, στο pod να, να ευκαλούμε, να μας μιλήσει λίγο για την εμπειρία, για το πώς νιώθουν, για το παιχνίδι το ίδιο, because we don't, we don't really know much about it, but um, uh, soon we're going to have one of the, the παίχτριες του Ομόνια Βίτσ Χάνβου και να προσπαθήσουμε και φέτος να, μες τα pods να μιλούμε και λίγο παραπάνω και για, τα, για το σωματίο, όχι τόσο... Να γίνεται κουβέντα μεγάλη, απλά να ενημερωτικά ότι να παίζει το βολέι, το μπάσκετ, το σάικλιν, το φούτσαλ, τις τάδι ώρες, ίσως να λαλούμε και λιόν τα αποτελέσματα, για να... γιατί χρειάζεται γιόν το κομμάτι. Ο μόνοι είναι μόνο μαπά. So, ξανά συγχαρητήρια στις κορούες για γιόν που καταφέρασε. Ε, μην ξεχνάτε ότι να έχουμε και τους καλεσμένους εκπλήξει που προσπαθούμε να ακούμε να συντονιστούμε, να δούμε πότε να βρεθούμε. Ο ένας να λέει μετά από το κοτσίντο φιλικό, ο άλλος μετά το άλλο φιλικό, ο άλλος να πάει διακοπές, ο άλλος έτσι το ζύο, αλλά να το κανονίσουμε. Και να... Με σύγουρος ότι είναι να έχει πολύ την ενδιαφέρον. 
Ah, oh, and uh, yeah. soon, very soon. It's going to be soon, but yeah, unless we... Not in a thousand a day, mate. Not in a thousand a day. Mm, yeah. 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 So, <clears throat> yeah. Για το παιχνίδι με έτσι ξανά μια γλίωρη κουβέντα, να το πω στα ελληνικά. Ε, όσον αφορά τον, τον Παναγία, να το πω έτσι γλίωρα, ε, ο Παναγία έδειξε να, να δείχνει το, το posture του τον που είπα ότι είναι έτοιμο για να πιάσει κάποιες ευκαιρίες. Ο Καϊάφας έδειξε να προσπαθεί να, να ξέρει τη θέση, να απλά μπορεί να λίγο βαριά τα πόδια, αλλά λίγο αργός. Θέλει να χτίσει λίγο αυτοπαιδίες, ας μην ξεχνώ ότι κουαλά και να ρετήσει τον που είναι το πιο βαρύ στην ιστορία της ομόνιας των παππούν του και των παπάν του. Ε, και πρέπει σιγά σιγά και γύρω να μπει να του δοθούν οι ευκαιρίες. Είπαμε για ο Λάγκ ότι ελπίζουμε ότι φέτος είναι να αναλάβει τον ηγετικό ρόλο αν και ήρθαν και ο Μιλέτης για τον σκοπό και ο, ο Ιούστε έχει την εμπειρία, αλλά χρειάζεται και ένας πολύ καλός Λάγκ φέτος και ελπίζω να το η χρονιά του. Ε, στο κέντρο ο Μίξ έδειχνε έτσι λίγο πιο... Ε, he, he was moving in and around the, the area, he didn't want to... It seemed to me like he was a bit more careful Μίξ, he didn't want to get injured or anything, as he meant και ο Χρήστου είχα διαθεσή, ο Χρήστου σαν δεκάρι, I thought that he should have done better at times because he was chasing the ball, he, he, he didn't hide, he was asking for the ball, but uh, some of his decisions weren't that good, uh, but maybe it's because of him wanting to prove uh, something, as I mentioned about uh, Sava, I think Sava is going to be a very interesting uh, prospect and a project that if... Uh, We work with him, he's going to be a, a really good talent. Uh, but he, as we say for everyone, they have to work hard. Barker still said it. Bolagalo, close control, switching. Liorabu, Aristerosto, Dexin, set pieces. Still lend us to danger because this is something that we have to improve this season, especially. And they all beat the first man. Yeah, there you go. So it, it was like. A, Yeah, better than most of the set pieces we had all over last year. So, yeah, we need to add that into our repertoire, especially when games we're playing against teams that are going to have like Namas Pezu Zonin, Namas Klin, Namas Borumen, Nadus Pernumen, Okaku, Idan Okaku, who a polema, Netrexen, and Bernes to Scorus, a prospice and Napilisi, Jokaku axis is FKRS too. Επειδή ο κάπου που απέδειξε πέρσι σε μια χρόνια που οι άλλοι είναι καμάς τεπάβο ότι ευκήκαν, είπαμε να ζει για τον κάπου. Am I forgetting someone? And then the second half, OK. Uh, Miletic, I don't think he, he did something, you know, OK. He's got presence, he's a tall guy, he's a big boy. Uh, I think he's going to be good in the, in, in the air, you know. Um, but, you know, I didn't see... I didn't see him, you know, with the challenge. I didn't see him, you know, man to man. I didn't see the experience. I didn't see the. But you know, on the, uh, don't complain. Uh, you stay. I like, you know, he, he he played a lot of diagonal balls. You know, he he's cool. I, I, you stay. I'm starting to like you stay since like last year. I, I'm I'm liking you stay. You know, I I, I like you stay. Um, uh, Joe or Matthews. Uh, contrary to to Sheu, uh, I think Matthews shows that he he wants to to push up a lot. He made a mistake at one point. He gave the ball easy and he was running back to, which was an official game was gonna have a lot of people on his back. But at least I saw that uh, he wants to. So that's something I like because, as I mentioned with Sheu, I didn't think he was very good going up. He was a better defender in my eyes, uh, but not very good going up. And he was he didn't really help Loizzo uh, as well. But Matthews uh, showed that. Bruno, I think, uh, for me, him... Uh, he. From the four players that we signed, for me, Bruno is the player that once he adjusts and gels with the rest of the team, he's, got, he's a very good player. He's a very, very good player. And he can help both as a number 10. He can play on the wing. Uh, he's, got, he's, he's full of skill. He's got a good control. He can hold the ball. He knows how to cover the ball. He, he, he's a good player, definitely. 
ο Ζετκής πάλι έδειξε ότι η Στάιμα Καρνιώτησα έδουλεψε υπέρ του, ο Βενιζέλος το ίδιο, ο Ασημένος ανέβηκε πολλά το δεύτερο ενήχρονο. I don't know, how, how did you see Ασημένος, do you think Ασημένος, the first half was playing as a number six and the second half when Χάμπος came, Χάμπος played as a number six and Ασημένος as a number eight, because it seemed to me that he was pushing up a lot more the second half. So I was, I was a bit, you know, who's playing a number six, who's playing a number eight? Humbles is being humbles, you know, but he, I also spoke to him, he says, like most of the players. Yeah, I think asimeno has got more of an engine. Um, hence, hence the Asimeno Heat Mac, Heat Mac t-shirt we've we've created on, um, yeah. you know, the link is in the comment, is, is in the synopsis. So if you want, oh, well, sorry. OLB. Well, it is on the OLB website, but if you want any, you know, no there's merchandise, you get a see cheap plug. But um, no, he's, he's got an engine on him, and and the thing is with Asimeno, he is the epitome of box to box midfielder. You know, he can win the ball, he can pass the ball, he can spray balls as well. Um, he likes to get forward. I, I like the look of him, I really do. I think he's got a lot of potential, but he's what? They got, they got, I think. Uh, 18, 18 and a half. Uh, yeah. not, not so more. I think, yeah, listen, we, we've got... We've got Actually, it was there, funny. We'll sorry, it. sorry, sorry. Yesterday when I saw it, was like, like Sibek Tarawe, and he spoke to me, Stom Blithindigo, you know how they speak. Yes, yeah. Askirie. Yes, Askirie. <laughs> Bless him. Bless yeah. him. Yeah, yeah but that shows man. he's got respect, manners. man. That shows he's got respect manners. and manners, man. Fucking manners. What a lad. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think... Um, with with Humble, Humble isn't listen. Humble will dictate the tempo when he's on the ball. He doesn't need to make bursting runs. He's one of those intelligent players where he might not be the quickest with his feet, but up here he's three or four levels ahead. You know, um, he's got that calm presence. So I think it's good to have. Um, but and I think those two complement each other. And I think I think it's a good mix that we've got. We've got four central midfielders that can that can play ball, uh, that can win the ball. Um, I've got position, positional awareness. Um, as I said, they're ball players. We probably do need another central midfielder, an, an extra experienced one, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. We need an experienced one because Gusso, I don't know what's happening with him. Um, and I don't like to speculate and I don't like to speak about the guy. But, you know, right now we shouldn't really worry about when he's going to come back. We should worry about his health and his mental health as well. Yeah. Um, because being away from football for that long... Uh, because of an injury that you can't say someone fouled him and that killed him. Do you get what I'm saying? It's just one of these things, yeah. you know. And, I, and you know, if he was out with a long-term injury because of a, a, a foul from another player, he could probably accept it more. But this is something that is, you know, just fucking. Where did that come from? Kind of thing. Yeah. So. You know, it's Grima, and you no, know, we should just leave the guy alone, let him get on with his life, let him deal with whatever he has to do, and inshallah he gets fit and he's able to play again. Um, but yeah, so uh, is there anything hey, is there, okay about the uh, team I spoke about? Uh, so I think we just covered around about everything. I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to add. The uh, team's leaving, it's going to Poland tomorrow, so I think they're gonna. Give three or four friendly games. Να παίξουμε Ιάννηνα, να παίξουμε Ευραίους, να παίξουμε Ανόρθωση. Yeah, and don't forget, eh, last season, we, I think we made two signings while we were on, on um, pre-season in Poland. I think Mix and Bash came as well, didn't they? I think they yeah, came to the training, training camp. There. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, eh, Fide, taxi, we, we, we'll wait a bit longer. We'll see. We definitely need uh, players to come in. I mean, let's not forget... Do you remember Lazar Markovic? Yeah, he's he's yeah. free because he left Partizan, and I know that he was offered a contract from a club in Cyprus, a big contract, and he said no because he doesn't want to come. So I don't know which club. I know that he was offered the contract though. But anyway, it was a it was a pretty big contract as well. Um, but anyway, I'm guessing it was Buffalo. <laughs> offering money to left right centre, but um, yeah, I, I don't really have anything else to say about Omonia. I'm I'm Omonia out. For now. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It's close to 50 minutes, actually 50 minutes to round. Yeah. Yeah. Like the fucking videos, Ray Boys. Hey, like, oh, 
Πάμε Μα, Μα, Μαριλέ, Μαριλένα said we, maybe separate guests. Ναι, yeah, καλό. About other areas. Well, listen, we haven't had a, a female on the pod yet. Why don't we have some female football fans? I mean, there are loads of females that go to Omonia games, right? And um, they're, they're more than welcome to come on. It isn't a bloke's show. Do you know what I mean? It's not just about men. Um, you know, Cyprus puts the UK to shame when it comes to women going to football because women go to football in Cyprus and they have a great time, whereas women go to football in England then they get abused. You know, it's just fucking weird out here. But anyway, let's get more girls on, man. Let's get more girls. There's too many, man. Too many, many, man. <laughs> We need some more girls in here. It's into fucking Skepta. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's it. And the next time we do a show, we can we can talk about my my plans to do stuff in Cyprus. I've got some plans. Ooh, nice, nice, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. But let's see, let's see. But anyway, wrap it up, Filemo. I don't think there isn't there's much to, to talk about. Is it? Ε, πλέον, επαναλαμβάνω τον εαυτό μου, πρώτο φοιτικό, νομίζω ότι πιάμε παραπάνω του τύπου είμαστε, ξέρεις, πρεζόνια της μάπας, να μιλήσουμε το χόρτο, να κόψουν τις κουέντες μας, να δούμε τους παρέες μας, τους διπλανούς μας, τα σύζον, να μιλήσουμε για μπάλαμπα βασικά, ε, να έχει πολλά ακόμα φιλικά, να ξεπλησιάζει, δεν θα χαρακτηρίσω επικίνδυνα το πρώτο επίσημο παιχνίδι, ε, γι' αυτόν... Ε, Χρειάζεται να κάνουμε εν υπομονή, ο καθένας δικαιωτέ να έχει την άποψη του που αφορά σε συγκεκριμένη στιγμή τις μεταγραφές ε, και εγώ είμαι μες κοινούς που θεωρώ ότι πρέπει να δείχνουν λίγο παραπάνω από φασιστικότητα, αλλά στο τέλος της ημέρας και όπου μετράει ε, με τον α ή β τρόπο να καταφέρεις να επιτυχείς τους στόχους σου που είναι σε πρώτη φάση να περάσουμε στους ομιλούς του Ευρώπα και εκείνοι που να έρθουν να μας βοηθήσουν, δεν έρχονται να βοηθήσουν σε έναν τεφικό παιχνίδι και έρχονται να βοηθήσουν ολόκληρη τη χρονιά που να παίξουν μπορεί και πέντε παιχνίδια. Γι' αυτό ξανά υπομονή, στήριξη, τα season, tickets ξεπεράσαν τις 6.000 και πάμε προς όλο τα χώρος σε ρεκόρ πιστεύω εγώ, επειδή έχεις ακόμα ένα μήνα περίπου μέχρι τα επίσημα παιχνίδια και με τις μεταγραφές που να έρθουν το momentum πιθανόν και κάποια επιτυχία, έναν καλό αποτέλεσμα, να βοηθήσει στον κόσμο. Αρχή της σεζόνες του ανεπίσημα, εχθές με προφυλικό και να τα λούμε ξανά πολλά συχνά και που τα με, μαζί και με τον Chris και με τον Στέλ. Οπότε πάμε στην λάκκα μου. Chris μου, don't cry baby μου, επιθυμίσαμε σε. You little 